welcome back to the craft castle do you like this bun <laughs> it is a little wild and crazy and that's because i have been busy crafting in here today and i'm going to show you what fun thing we are going to make today look at this little ornament it's a shaker tree ornament and it works there is some shakers on the inside do you Stick and love this. I love this. I used my Glowforge for this project, but you could use any laser cutter that you have. I'm going to show you how we're going to make this exact file. Look at that. Oh, so stinking cute. I probably should have added a little bit more glitz and glam on the inside of my tree, but like once you hang it up on your tree behind some lights, this is going to be amazing. Inside the stars, you're going to see my kids and myself and my husband's name engraved on those stars with a whole shaker i mean this thing is amazing absolutely amazing we're gonna learn how to make that are you ready are you ready okay like i said before you're gonna be able to use this file on any laser cutter so i'm gonna be using inkscape which is a free design program and i'm going to personally upload it into my glowforge however if you have an x tool an omtech a thunder, an epilogue, it doesn't matter what laser it is, you're going to be able to use this file. So it's not just going to be a Glowforge tutorial today. Now, to get you quicker, because like who wants to design a Christmas tree from start? Not me. However, I did for you. So to move this tutorial along a little bit faster, because like I said, but I mean, Designing a Christmas tree from start to finish can get a little bit of a pain in the butt. I've actually created a free file in my cardstock warehouse where all you have to do is go there. It's free. There's no strings attached. You just need to download this Christmas tree file. It is not going to be a shaker ornament Christmas tree file. It is going to be just a layered SVG Christmas tree. I'm going to show you how we are going to take a layered SVG file and turn it into a shaker ornament. Did you follow along? Hopefully you did. All right, so let's just get started. Okay, so I'm gonna make myself really small. And remember what I said, you're gonna go to my cardstock warehouse and you are going to download that free file. When you have that file, you are going to find it and we are gonna drag and drop it into our Inkscape. This is going to pop up. I don't ever touch it, just press okay. There is the layered SVG file that I've created. Now. Again, this is not a shaker ornament. So what we need to do, I always like to keep my original SVG files or anything that I'm working with onto this side. So if I mess up, I, I can start back at the very beginning. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna Command D, which is duplicate, and I'm gonna drag a new one over into here. Now I am going to right click this and I'm gonna press ungroup. When you do that, this right here, I want it to be an engraving. So I'm going to shift on my keyboard and this green, and I'm going to move this together. So I'm gonna keep these together. So it is going to be hard to see what my original ornament looks like, but do you see how there is engraved uh, Christmas lights and stuff like that on top? So we are essentially keeping the engraving with that layer. It will get confusing, just trust the process. Make sure that that green and that red are together and moved over. Now we have our little star, which is right here, and I'm just going to move that up. Okay, so the very next thing I wanna do is going back over into my original file, I'm gonna Command D, which is duplicate, and I'm gonna move this down. Click on the duplicated file, right click, and press ungroup. For this duplicated file, we are building the shaker portion. So it's going to be this little donut that's right here. It's really hard to see, but there is a layer in there. So all I need to do is I'm gonna delete this. I'm also gonna delete this star. Okay, and for the shaker portion, we are now creating the shaker. What we are going to do is, is we are gonna create an inset making this donut. The easiest way to show you is at the very top right here. Do you see this green outline of the entire Christmas tree? That is exactly what the shaker layer looks like. So for this, you want to create this donut. You don't want it too thin because it'll be too fragile when you cut it on your laser cutter, but you definitely don't want it too thick because then you won't be able to put in like your stars and stuff like that. 
there's kind of like a an equal medium between the two if you know what if you if you can get what I'm saying that being said how we're going to create the inset is clicking into that green layer we are going to command shift in the in the nine key and we are going to go in now if I did one do you see how thin this little area is right here in between the green and that brown that is going to be way too thin so we're going to command shift nine again this may be a little bit too thin i probably wouldn't go there so let's go command shift and nine again now i like the thickness of this border so looking in between the gray layer and the brown layer this little border right here i prefer this look right here so that being said i'm going to keep it that way now you can keep going in if you wanted to and make it even thicker but then again remember what i said the larger your border, the less room you're gonna be able to have to put like extra stars or glitter in. Okay, when we have that done, let's zoom out real quick. What I'm going to do is, is I'm gonna take this inset and I'm in Command D, which is duplicate, and I'm gonna drag it over here. Now what we wanna do is selecting both that green layer and that brown layer, and we're gonna Command, Shift, and the minus key. So we just sliced all the way through. Isn't that thing so cute? So this is going to be your uh, shaker portion right here. So if we zoom out just one more time, pressing the minus key, this right here is gonna be your very back piece. This right here is going to be your shaker portion. This right here is going to be the very front piece. Now I like to hide the ugly with a little border so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this over into like a lighter color just so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go back over into my original screenshot and Command D, which is duplicate. And I'm going to drag this down over here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click this one and press ungroup. And I'm going to delete everything but this original green tree. Okay, then what I wanna do is with this duplicated file, I'm gonna send it to the back and I'm gonna press shift on my keyboard and also that lighter brown color that we, that we have. And then I'm gonna come over here to the align button. If this did not pop up for you, it's gonna be down here. And then we're gonna align this to the center. Okay, when we have it aligned completely center, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select both, that, both pieces, the green and that tan color, and I'm gonna command shift and the minus key. That is going to be our cute little outside of our ornament that just kind of houses all the ugly glue that's there or the layers. We're gonna hide the ugly with that little strap. Okay, and so for my shaker ornament, do you see how I have the stump and it's a black, it's a dark brown acrylic stump. It's kind of hard to see, but do you see that? brown acrylic stump. I mean, this is totally optional. As I was assembling this, I decided that I actually really wanted that stump in there. Um, so what I'm now going to do is with my original SVG file, I'm gonna Command D, which is duplicate, and I'm gonna drag this down. There is a lot of little pieces that go along with this ornament, but they end up being so freaking cute in the end. Okay, I am gonna right click, and I'm gonna press ungroup on, the, on that duplicated SVG file and now I'm going to delete everything but that green uh this green piece and the and the brown piece selecting both of those pieces I'm going to command shift and the minus key now it's going to look funky monkey like we have some weird lines and stuff like that that's okay command shift and k we're going to release all the paths now I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag this down and put it over on my canvas now all the rest of this stuff, I am just gonna delete it. I do not need it. Okay, so at this point, we are essentially done building the SVG file. You could delete the original SVG file. So the layers of operation or assembly for our shaker ornament, this is going to be the very back piece. This is going to be your shaker element or what I would like to call the donut. It's gonna house everything in. This right here is going to be the topper to your or to your shaker so you don't lose any of your stars and glitz and glam. And this thing right here is just going to make everything look at like a finished look, like how I have it right here, where it's just nice and finished. 
and it looks absolutely gorgeous. Obviously you have the star to put right there when we glue this and then we have the stump to put at the bottom to finish off the entire look. Okay, two more things that we are going to need in order to make this ornament an actual ornament. First and foremost, this is a shaker ornament and I wanna put some stars inside my ornament, just like how I have on my original one in here. So all I'm going to do is, is I'm gonna take my original yellow star and I'm gonna command D, which is duplicate, and I'm just gonna drag it into this portion right here. This is our shaker. So anything that fits inside the inside portion of this will fit when we go and cut this and assemble it later. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in pressing the plus sign on my keyboard and making sure that this right here is locked. I don't wanna distort my stars. I'm just gonna make these just a tad bit bigger and I'm gonna command D, which is duplicate. I'm gonna make, make some stars. Okay, so let's say that I had a family of five that I was making this for. The very next thing you wanna do is go over here into a text box and we just want to create a text box. So click anywhere on your canvas and let's do mom. Oop, that is really big. If it's really big and large and in charge, you just wanna go up into your uh, selector tool, that arrow tool, making sure that this right here is still locked and we are just gonna make this smaller and we're gonna fit it inside one of the stars. Okay, I'm gonna change this over to black. Okay, so I have one. Once I have one, all I'm gonna do is Command D, which is duplicate. It'll look like nothing happened. We're just gonna drag that top layer down and here's our second text box. Double click this and let's do dab. Okay, when you have that done, you can come up here into the arrow tool and you can center this on there. You can resize it, whatever you want. Command D, which is duplicate again. And let's just move this over. And then you wanna fill in all your stars with the names that you need. Okay, when you have your stars filled in, this is very important. Before we go any further, you wanna make sure that the spelling of every name is exactly what you want. Then when you have that done, clicking on the first name, we're gonna command shift C, which is creating a path. Command shift G, which is ungrouping. And then command shift and the plus sign, which is welding it all together. You're gonna to wanna to do that with all the names. Okay, when I have that done, I'm just gonna select one star and one name, and I'm gonna command G, which is group. Going back over to every star doing the same thing. Okay, so now we need a spot to hang our ornament because right now we do not have anywhere that we can hang this ornament. Instead of slicing through the ornament, or creating a hole inside the star or something like that. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna come over here into this circle and I'm just gonna make a circle. It's okay if it looks funky monkey because we can now go into the arrow tool, making sure that this right here is unchecked. Now let's make this a full circle. Let's do 0 0.4, 0 0.4. And that right there is now a perfect circle. I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna lock it up. And let's zoom in. This is our back layer for our ornament, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna drag this. Now I kind of want the ornament to like hang out a little bit of a slant. Um, you can put it at the top of the star. I think it might take away from what the star looks like. You can put, I mean, it's your ornament. You can do whatever you want. So I am just going to put this ornament. You wanna make sure that it gets cut in just a little bit to the original backer. Now I'm gonna command D, which is duplicate. I'm gonna change that duplicated layer to just to a different color. And remember how we made that inset before making our shakers? What well, I'm gonna do, same thing as we did before, Command, Shift, and Nine, and I'm gonna make a smaller circle. Now for this one, I definitely want the circle to be a lot smaller than the outside ring. Just so acrylic, if you're gonna end up cutting this on acrylic or even wood, but especially for acrylic, acrylic is very fragile. And so you want that ring to be kind of thick to accommodate like you tugging and pulling on that string. Okay, when you have that done, you wanna press shift on your keyboard and also the black layer, command shift and the minus key, and you've just created a donut. Now, this is not a welded piece. So if you were to go and cut this, you would have a random 
donut cut out of a little bit of your back piece. So what you wanna do is selecting your donut you just created, shift on the keyboard and also that brown layer. We're gonna command shift and now we're gonna to go to the plus sign. We just welded this together. So when you go ahead and assemble it all, you're gonna have this cute little circle at the very edge of it. You're gonna be able to loop your string into and be able to hang it onto your Christmas tree. Cute, huh? Okay, the very last thing before we save this and upload it into your Glowforge app. Anytime you engrave on clear acrylic, it's a personal preference of mine. I think it ends up making it look a lot better. So I'm gonna tell you exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm gonna tell you, you are not gonna regret doing this. So when we engrave on clear acrylic, everything turns white. Now, if you were to leave the file the way that it is, you would engrave on the top of it. So this right here would not be smooth. It would be, you know, like a rough and bumpy. In mine, you can't tell, but just by feeling it, it's nice and smooth. The reason for that is I put it on the back of my ornament. So what you wanna do is, is selecting this right here. Let's Command G, which is group. And now let's come over here and we're gonna flip this horizontally. Now it's gonna look funky monkey, but don't worry because we're gonna engrave on the back and then let's say we have this. We're gonna engrave on the back. When we go to assemble it, we're gonna flip it over and it's going to then be correct on both sides and that rough bumpy engraving is going to be hidden on the inside of your shaker ornament. It just gives it a little bit more to, I mean, a shaker ornament is already extra, but it just gives it like a real professional finished look when you hide all the bumpiness on the inside. No one will be ever be able to tell that it's actually rough and bumpy. All right, that's it. That is your finished shaker Christmas tree file. Now all you wanna do is you wanna save it. So we're gonna go to file and save as, and we're gonna rename it. I'm gonna name it Shaker Tree Ornament, and then I'm gonna press save. Now what you wanna do is go over into your Safari, and we're gonna load in the Glowforge app. You wanna come up here where it says create new design, and we're gonna upload a file. We're gonna find that file and press upload. Okay, so here is my Shaker Ornament. So for this project, I'm gonna be doing all acrylic. I love working with acrylic because it just, I didn't have to paint anything outside of in um, infilling the names. I didn't have to paint anything. I paint like a toddler and I just love the finished look of acrylic because it's just nice and seamless and looks amazing. The other thing, remember this shaker donut, the, the portion of the shaker that's gonna house all of our elements? I am using thick acrylic. It is going to be hard to tell, but there is a thick piece of acrylic that's right here. I like using thick acrylic only for the shaker donut portion because then I it limits how many layers I have to cut and glue together. Thick acrylic is kind of pricey to purchase, but I can tell you that this right here looks a lot nicer than, let's say, sandwiching two extra layers in. Now, if you do not have thick acrylic, you, that's fine. All you want to do is this layer right here. Oop, let's right click and let's press ungroup. Okay, this layer right here, you're going to want to cut this two times. If you do not have thick acrylic, you want to cut just this layer two times in clear acrylic. You want to do it in clear. Let's just change over this material. Eh, we'll do thick, we'll do medium maple plywood here for a second because a lot of things are set to engrave so we need to change the settings. So we got this right here that's going to be brown acrylic and that's set to cut. This right here for some reason is set to engrave. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to set it to cut. We got the lights are set to engrave. Oh, our star is set to engrave. So I'm going to change it to cut. So then that looks good. I think it looks great. We got all these cuts. Now the only two things that we are going to engrave are the lights to our topper of our shaker and then the names in our stars. All right, let me go turn on the Glowforge and we're going to cut this and then I'll show you how to assemble it all together. 
Okay, so the, I just wanted to show you the one thing that I do love about the Glowforge is I can just put in all this random material. As long as I remember what color is which, I'm gonna be able to cut a whole bunch in one sitting. So like this right here is clear. The very first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna come up here and do these three dots and I'm gonna set focus. I'm gonna set focus on my acrylic. For some weird reason, I know that you could just come up here and just press print and it will do like an auto focus. I never have good results with my Glowforge doing it that way. So I always have to do a manual set focus. And then what I can do is, is I can come up here and I can rearrange all of my things. Okay, so instead of having to switch materials in and out, in and out, I'm just gonna be able to do a whole bunch on one. And then when I get done with all of this, I'll just have to stick that thick acrylic in and cut the thick acrylic and I'm done. So now I'm just gonna press ready. I'm gonna let my machine think and do its processing and go press that magic button. Now I will see you over at the assembly process. Now we've made it to the point where all of our pieces are cut out of our laser cutter. The very first thing you want to do if you engraved into your acrylic is you want to paint fill your names in. That's going to be the very first thing you're going to do. I like to use Posco markers, especially the thin little ones for the small, small little areas. I just like to dab the paint on in there just like that. Okay, that's going to be it for your paint fills. I'm just going to let this dry a little bit before I take off the masking tape. Okay, so for shaker ornaments on the very back, I'm going to take my very back piece and I'm gonna take, this is going to be your backside. I'm gonna leave that the way it is. And I'm going to take off the very front of the acrylic. Now, there are a lot of acrylic artists out there that like to use 3M tape for gluing. I am not one of those people. I don't particularly care to use it. So what I always use for gluing my acrylic is going to be this stuff. I always rebottle it into something like this. That just has like a finer tip to glue versus something that's really big like this because you don't want to, you don't need a whole lot of glue. So now the next layer is going to be your shaker portion. So I'm just going to take off the backing. Okay, we want to make sure that we remember which side is the back side. So I'm going to put the back side down take off the masking tape. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is taking the front, it's now hard to see because it's clear, we're gonna roll this over. Using my glue, I'm gonna put glue around the entire outer edge. You don't want to miss anything, especially if you're putting glitter in your ornament because then it's going to leak out. So the reason why I use this particular glue is that it's silicone. So that means that it is a gap filler. So if you move and miss a piece in your gluing, it will, when it dries, it'll start drying and gap filling in. Okay, making sure that you went all the way around your entire outside area. Now the silicone glue does kind of get stringy it's clear as well, so it's gonna be hard to see. There's like a little piece of string here. I always just take my pick and just kind of pull that string away, getting rid of it. Now taking this, I'm gonna roll it over and put it on top of my very back layer. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry just for a second and work on the very front layer. So this is going to be, and remember what I said about engraving on the back? This is rough, right? If we did not mirror this, what happens is, is all of this is gonna be on the front and then you would be able to feel it. So I am just going to take off the masking tape. Okay, you don't wanna to touch this portion too much because then it'll pick up your fingerprints. And since this is going on the inside of your shaker, you won't be able to uh, wipe your fingerprints off. Then what you're gonna do is flip it over. So this is what masking tape we have, we've taken off. We're gonna flip this over. We're gonna take off the top. Same thing with this. We are going to just take this off the very back portion first, remembering that this is gonna be our back. I'm gonna take off the very front masking tape. Okay, flipping this over, you wanna put another bead of glue down the back side. You don't necessarily have to go around the entire perim perimeter of this one because we aren't gonna really be housing anything. It's just gonna be there for looks. However, I'm gonna go around the entire perimeter just so I can show you what those like little strands do and then how to fix them. There is a strand right here of glue. I'm just gonna take my pick and kind of pick 
out the strands. Okay, when I have that done, then all I'm gonna do is flip this over and put it on top of that clear ornament, the one that's been engraved. Okay, so we're gonna let this piece dry and we'll move on to the shaker portion. Okay, I just have a piece of uh, Clorox wipe. I'm just gonna dab off the excess paint off of my stars. Okay, you wanna take the masking tape off of every single star, but then also you wanna take it off the back. Okay, I have some, <laughs> I don't have any cookies. I have uh, some glitter in here. This is like some snow glitter that I just found at Hobby Lobby a couple years ago. I just bought a whole bunch of it and just kind of mixed it into this little bowl. You wanna just spoon in some glitter. Now, last time I did not put a whole lot of glitter and this time I'm gonna put some more snow in there. Put more snow than I did last time. I like this stuff because it's chunky. It's not thin like normal glitter. I don't even know what you would call this because it's definitely not glitter. Okay, you wanna make sure that you don't have any of that stuff on the outside portion of your donut. So push it all in, making sure that there's nothing that's gonna block the glue from drying properly. Okay, I am gonna add in the stars. Okay, we're done with that. You can honestly fill up your ornament with anything that you wanted. I just love this snow stuff. It looks so stinking cute when it's done. Taking the very front portion, we're going to roll this over. Now you want to put the glue only on the outside area of your Christmas tree. Then we're gonna roll this over, doing the same thing. Now we're just going to enclose our shaker ornament. Okay, I am going to take the back off my stump and then do the front. I'm just gonna add a bit of glue to the very back of my stump portion right there. Let's just place that in. Okay, doing our star. And here is your finished shaker ornament. Now, I would definitely suggest letting this dry completely before moving it and shaking it around. You definitely don't want any of your layers of acrylic to shift on you. That being said, the very back piece we left on the masking tape, just take it off after it's dry. Don't take it off right now. But to envision what it looks like right now, it kind of looks like you can't see anything from the back, but just to envision what it looks like without the masking, this is what it ends up looking like. And all of those shakers that are in there and the snow and everything just shake right around. Nothing falls out the sides. This ended up being so stinking cute. Do you love this? All right, y'all, I sure hope I inspired you to create and I will see you later.